The right analysis of the data at the right time can be very useful in a world where data is being generated at an alarming rate. At the moment, Apache Spark is one of the most amazing frameworks for handling big data in real time and performing analysis. Hi everyone, I am Umbra Suhail. Welcome to Simply Lance YouTube channel. We will discuss PySpark in this session. If you want more amazing tech related videos, do like, subscribe and hit the bell icon to stay tuned. Let's get to the video to learn more about PySpark without any further delay. We will begin the session with an overview of Apache Spark. Then we will proceed to our main topic, what is PySpark? And next, we will discuss PySpark's key features. Moving forward, we will understand the RDD concept and need of PySpark. And then the difference between Scala and PySpark. After that, we will understand PySpark's data frame. And finally, we will end this session by discussing its use cases in the industry. In order to understand PySpark and its use in the big data world, we must first understand Apache Spark. So let's take a look at Apache Spark. Apache Spark is an open source cluster computing framework that is used to develop big data applications that can perform fast analytics over large data sets. Spark is written in Scala, but it can also be used from Python using PySpark. It is very popular and one of the most requested tools in the IT industry because it has inbuilt tools for SQL, machine learning and streaming. So now that we understand Apache Spark, it will be easier for us to understand PySpark. So let's dive into it. PySpark is a Python API to support Python with Apache Spark. Python can easily be connected with Apache Spark using the PySpark provided PyForger library. When it comes to analyzing or working with large datasets, PySpark is essential. PySpark is a Python API to support Python with Apache Spark. Python can easily be connected with Apache Spark using the PySpark provided PyForger library. When it comes to analyzing or working with large datasets, PySpark is essential. PySpark is a mostly search tool among data engineers because of its functionality. So now that we understood about PySpark, now we shall move on to its features. Real-time computing PySpark focuses on in-memory processing and offers real-time computing on massive amounts of data. So the low latency is evident. The next feature which comes in is support for several languages. Scala, Java, Python and R just a few programming languages with which the PySpark framework is compatible. Because of its interoperability, it is the best framework for processing large datasets. The next feature we have is consistency of disk and caching. The PySpark frameworks offer powerful caching and reliable disk consistency. As we know, time is money and to work effectively, we need powerful and fast processing. So the next amazing feature of PySpark is rapid processing. With PySpark, we can process data quickly, roughly 100 times quicker in memory and 10 times faster on the disk. So now we have come to the most important feature of PySpark, which is effectiveness with RDD. Working with RDD is made easier by the dynamic typing of Python programming languages. If you are wondering what RDD is, let me give you a quick explanation of RDD. Let's learn more about RDD. RDD stands for Resilient Distributed Dataset. It is Apache Spark's primary data structure. RDD in Apache Spark is an immutable group of objects that computes on several cluster nodes. Resilient. With the use of RDD lineage graph, the system is resilient of fault tolerant and is therefore able to recompute missing or damaged partitions as a result of node failure. Now we have a better understanding of PySpark and its features. So let's understand the need of PySpark. 
It's crucial to understand why and when to use Spark with Python if you are going to learn PySpark. Here we will go over the basic factors to consider while deciding between Python and Scala for Apache Spark programming. Data Science Libraries You don't have to bother about the visuals or data science frameworks with the Python API. The R language's fundamental component can readily convert it to Python. The next factor which comes in is readability of code. Although internal modifications are simple in the Scala API, the Python API offers superior readability, maintenance and familiarity with the code. Complexity In contrast to Scala which produces verbose output and is therefore viewed as a complicated language. So the Python API provides an accessible, simple and comprehensive interface. Moving on to next factor, Machine Learning Libraries. Since Python offers several libraries based on machine learning approaches, it is popular for developing machine learning algorithm because it makes the process simpler. So now let's discuss the last factor on our list, Ease of Learning. Python is simpler to learn and is known for its simple syntax. In comparison to Scala, which has a complex syntax and is difficult to learn, it is also extremely productive despite having a basic syntax. If you are new to big data, you have probably heard of frameworks such as Spark. The technologies can be in Python or Scala. How do you choose programming languages? To answer this question, we must consider various factors. Let us figure out the answer to this question by understanding the difference between the two. Firstly, let's discuss the difference between compiled versus interpreted. One of the major differences is that Python is an interpreted language, which makes it quite handy when coding, whereas Scala requires you to compile your code for it to be executed by the Java virtual machine. This process results in a file containing bytecode. So the next difference is based on the performance. Spark offers two APIs, the high level one where data frames and data sets are found and the low level one which uses resilient distributed data sets. Scala offers superior performance with RDDs because Python has an additional communication overhead with the JVM. However, Python should not cause you any performance issue. Moving on to another difference that is based on type safety. Python has a dynamic typing, whereas Scala has static typing. When using dynamic typing, the type of the variable you are defining is not specified. Your code becomes simpler as a result. In Python, the type of your variable can be derived by writing its name and assigning a value. Now, what's the difference when it comes to a learning curve? It's typically easier to learn Python than Scala if you are just a beginner in any of the languages. Python has a progressive learning curve. But once you get the hang of it, you can use the same simple syntax you started with to do the advanced task. Let's discuss the difference based on the community support. Python has a much larger user base than Scala, which can help it gain support. As a result, Python benefits from more comprehensive libraries devoted to task complexity. Scala does have robust support. It is still far beyond Python. Finally, Let's discuss the last difference in our list based on the project scale. Python is a smart decision if you wish to work on a smaller project with less seasoned programmers. However, Scala is the ideal option for a large project that requires numerous resources and parallel processing. Let's discuss the difference based on community support. Python has a much larger user base than Scala, which can help it gain support. As a result, Python benefits from more comprehensive libraries devoted to various task complexity. Scala does have robust support. It is still far beyond Python. Finally, let's discuss the last difference in our list based on the project scale. Python is a smart decision if you wish to work on a smaller project with less seasoned programmers. However, Scala is the ideal option for a large project that requires numerous resources and parallel processing. Now let's learn about the data frame of PySpark. A data frame in PySpark is a distributed grouping of rows with named columns. 
In simpler terms, it is equivalent to an Excel sheet with column headers or a table in a relational database. The spreadsheet is on single machine where its data frame is partitioned across servers in data centers. It also has some features in common with RDD, such as being immutable because we can only build a data frame or RDD once without being able to edit it. Furthermore, RDD and data frame are both distributed in nature. Large collection of organized or semi-structured data can be processed using data frames. Petabytes of data can be handled using data frame in Apache Spark. Data frame supports a variety of data formats and sources. For example, Python, R, Scala, and Java all have API support. After learning different topics about PySpark in this session, we have reached our final topic, which is PySpark's use in industries. Let's take a look at it. Apache Spark is gaining popularity and becoming more widely used by its users, from startups to multinationals. Apache Spark is being used to create, develop, and innovate big data systems. Here are various Spark use examples for particular industries that show how to create and execute quick large data apps. E-commerce industry. Let's understand this with an example. Like Shopify wanting to analyze the kinds of goods its clients were selling. In order to find suitable retailers with whom it may collaborate in order to grow its business. Its data warehousing infrastructure was unable to resolve this issue since it's frequently timed out when processing data mining queries on millions of documents. Shopify successfully developed a list of stores for collaboration after processing 67 million entries using Apache Spark in a matter of minutes. The next use case of PySpark is in healthcare industries. Healthcare Spark is used in genomic sequencing. Prior to Spark, organizing all the chemicals compound with the genes took several weeks. With Spark, it only took a few hours now. My Fitness Paul, the biggest health and fitness community. Use cases of PySpark in industry. Apache Spark is gaining popularity and becoming more widely used by its users. From startups to multinationals, Apache Spark is being used to create, develop, and innovate big data systems. Here are various Spark use examples for particular industries that show how to create and execute quick large data apps. Firstly, we have e-commerce industry. Let's understand with this an example. Like Shopify wanted to analyze the kinds of goods its clients were selling in order to find suitable retailers with whom it may collaborate in order to grow its business. Its data warehousing infrastructure was unable to resolve this issue since it frequently timed out when processing data mining queries on millions of documents. Shopify successfully developed a list of stores where collaboration after processing 67 million entries using Apache Spark in a matter of minutes. The next use case of PySpark is in healthcare industries. Spark is used in genomic sequencing. Prior to Spark, organizing all the chemical compounds with genes took several weeks. With Spark, it only took a few hours only. MyFitnessPal, the biggest health and fitness community, uses Spark to clean user interdata with the ultimate purpose of identifying high-quality food products. The food calorie information of roughly 80 million individuals has been scanned by MyFitnessPal using Spark. Media and Entertainment With the help of Apache Spark, Pinterest is able to identify patterns in very valuable user engagement data so that it can quickly respond to emerging trends by gaining a true understanding of users' online behavior. To offer online suggestions to its users, Netflix leverages Spark for real-time stream analysis. Another best use of PySpark is in software and information service. The Spark developers have created Databricks. It is a platform that has been tailored for the cloud to run Spark and ML apps on AWS and Azure, as well as a throw training course. In order to grow the project and advance, they are working on Spark. Financial services provider FINRA assists in gaining real-time data insight from billions of data occurrences. It can test things on actual market data using Apache Spark. Last but not the least, 
Spice Park is used in travel industry as well. Let's learn more about it. Apache Spark usage in the travel sector is growing quickly. It facilitates consumer flawless traveling planning by expectating customized recommendation. By comparing numerous websites, they may also utilize it to advise tourists on where to book hotels. Spark is being used by TripAdvisor, a popular travel website that assists consumers in creating the ideal trip to speed up its tailored client suggestions. So with this, we have come to the end of this session on PySpark. I hope you found this session both interesting and exciting. If you have any questions about any of the topics covered in this session, or if you need the resources used in this session, please let us know in the comment section below. And our team of experts will be pleased to respond as soon as possible. Thank you until next time. This is Umra from Simply Learn Team signing off. Continue to learn and stay safe. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.